Hello, hello, and this is Shawnee P. Welcome to my YouTube channel. You all, it has been quite a while since I recorded a video, and this video was just an option of talking to the Lord over the past couple of days and him just placing something so profound on my heart and to share it with you all because I feel like he was not just only speaking to me, but he was speaking to many of you out there as well. And um, I just want the Holy Spirit to really show up and take space, you know, as I have this chat with you. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but please bear with me because I do not have the patience to edit any videos. I may add some clips and things like that because of just the current times that we're in right now. It is September 30th when I'm recording this video. Um, so just bear with me. Pick up your feed. Uh, grab something to drink. Grab some popcorn. I don't know. Grab your Bible. Because all of this is going to be biblical and um, I'm just, you know, in an interesting space right now. You ready? All right. So I live um, about an hour away from the intense western part of North Carolina that received all of the flooding from the hurricane. And I am currently um, impacted by what the storm did. Um, today's Monday. So the storm took the power out and phone lines were down since Friday morning so I have been without power and I still decided to record this video because by the grace of God I was able to receive a generator and charge my phone so then that way I can be at home with fully charged phone um, and the Lord just placed something on my heart the other day and then in the midnight hours this morning to be able to just you know just share some some wisdom with you all and during this time it has been a range of emotions. There's been sadness. There's been gratitude. There's just been me contending for my faith and to keep my mind on positive things, keep my mind on the Lord, which has been very challenging um, because there is no power. <laughs> and it also is very warm here. Um, so just having to deal with all of that stuff and then seeing the city, you know, that I live in and also seeing all of the from the cities that are like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour away from me and the damage, the lives that have been already impacted way more than myself. So I've been having more empathy than anything that comes with the sadness of it all. Um, and it's just been something I've never experienced before. Every time I drive somewhere, for some reason in the past couple of days, just for me to be able to get out of the house, I have been taking different routes to different places and I have seen so many trees that have been uprooted and big trees, trees that look very ancient as if they are over 100 years old and they're just laying down like it was nothing. And, and a tree actually next door from me right now um, in the front of a neighbor's house. So no houses were impacted in my neighborhood, but up the street, and I live in the countryside, so up the street there are many different houses that have been impacted as far as trees falling on the houses. but. The amount of damage that's been caused and the amount of time it's going to take to clean it all up is something that I don't think this state was prepared for. It's not something I was prepared for either. I'm from the Midwest, so I've never encountered anything of this level, um, this magnitude. I've typically watched individuals go through these type of catastrophic events on TV. So um, it just is different. When you're there and you can drive around and see the damage that was done but also see the impact on the people um the power is out in a lot of grocery stores um gas stations i mean they were running out of gas pretty quickly um because i live um close to the highway where a lot of those people who are westerners were coming you know trying to come east um the traffic very heavy but of course those first responders trying to get the other way it's just been very chaotic so I tried to only get on the highway during times where traffic is a little less chaotic um, and then take the back roads and things of that nature but for the most part I've been at home which is um, very challenging but it's okay um, because by the grace of God I am still here my home is fine you know it's just more downtime downtime that I've been able to spend with the Lord and when I was talking to the Lord uh, about these trees as I saw them the scripture that came to where it says, and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Um, hewn means to cut with 
blows of a heavy cutting instrument. Mind you, that was the wind that came through and swept up all of these trees. And like I said, these are huge trees. So it's like the roots and the, the grass is connected to the trees are all tossed up um, and laying around. Many of, most of the trees that I've seen so far have been moved onto the side of the road, but the cleanup has not been started. They've had to cut some of those trees up just to get them off, you know, out of the street. Um, but there are still a lot of trees that are still down blocking some um, drives, not drives, <laughs> blocking some streets. So there's a lot of detours and things of that nature right now, especially in the west, the western part of North Carolina. Um, it's going to take a lot of repairing, a lot of repairing, a lot of time, a lot of patience. Um, but I've just been praying for everything. As I was trying my hardest to go back to sleep this morning, in the wee hours of the morning, God placed it on my heart to read about the story of David and Goliath. And there was a lot of key points that stood out to me as I was reading the chapter that I felt like, hey, a lot of people are the Davids of this generation. A lot of you are coming up against giants. They're coming up against Goliaths. And the way that you're looking at them is from a place of intimidation. And God is needing many of us to be like David when it comes to that thing that's tormenting us, that's tugging at us, that is trying to defeat us, that has confidence that it can defeat us. And you know what? I think some of us also have confidence that it will defeat us. But I want to highlight some key points in this so then that way you can remember um, that God is victorious over all not some but over all and who he's called you to be is a representation of that victory okay so in first samuel 17 that's the whole story about david and goliath and verse 5 says he had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing five thousand shekels and when i read that it sounded like oh, intimidation because of the weight of what he was carrying in the armor of so I can imagine it just bright and shiny. So it looks appealing. It looks intimidating. Like the whole visual is there. And when you don't know any better and you don't know that God, you can wear the full armor of God, which weighs way more than the armor that anybody else is carrying. You just will not know any better. Okay. So when the weight seems to be too heavy, you have to understand this that the appearance of the thing does not dictate whether or not if it's victorious. It's God's word and your faith in his word that makes that thing smaller than what it is. So you can't look at the thing and say, hey, because physically it looks like this, it's, it's too much for me, which is what a lot of us do. Like we get hit with something that is a trial and we automatically say, oh, this thing is too heavy. I can't take on this. I can't fight back with this. So then you lay there and you allow it to keep like punching you in the face. And you have to view this thing the same way you would if you had somebody, a physical person, attacking you. You would not sit there. You would probably try to look and see how can I find something to get this person off of me? How can I push them off of me? How can I distract them? Something of that nature and a natural instinct. That's what we do. But because we don't physically always see these um, situations, sometimes we can run free in our minds so i know you've heard of this analogy before of the bigger they are the harder they fall and that's what i want you to keep in mind when it comes to that goliath in your life okay first samuel 17 and 19 says if he is able to fight and kill me we will become your subjects but if i overcome him and kill him you will become our subjects and serve us and what i started thinking about when reading this part of the verse is that um Many of us will cower down and let Goliath think he's a match for God. And when we do that, all we do is allow him to get in our minds and to get into our nervous system. Now he's in our DNA and now we are full of fear. And we also have this reverence 
for Goliath. So think about whatever that Goliath is in your life, how you're respecting that thing more than you're respecting God and his word, his promises for who he is. Um, you have to know that Goliath is no match for our God, especially when you have the whole host of angels backing you up, okay? You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and you got all the angels, okay? There is a scripture um, in, I think it's 2 Kings, where Elijah and um, a guy that was with him, and they were on horses, and they were going in to defeat um, an army, I believe. And I recall that individual feeling concerned the same way that many of these individuals were in the story of David and Goliath, where they were just intimidated by who they, what they saw, right? So Elijah asked God, prayed and said, um, uh, open his eyes. Hold on, I'm going to grab the scripture. All right, I found the scripture, you all. So 2 Kings verses, no, chapter 16, verses 17, and Elijah prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. Many of us need to open our eyes so that we can see that it's more of us than them. It's more of God than it is of the giant that you're seeing. No matter how big, how wide, how heavy it may look, God is bigger than that. And I'm, my prayer to you is as you're watching this video, if there's anything that's heavy in your causing you to not see who your God is, I pray that your eyes are open right now in the name of Jesus. Because we need that. We need to have a greater view of who is this God. We need to have a greater view of who our, who your God really is. It's just like this weight that has been on you is lifted off. Trust me, I have been there before where I was building my relationship with the Lord and I, I was believing him for something, just did not understand. But I'm telling you, when I read that scripture, and this is when the Lord had me study Elijah at that time. That blew me away. That blew me away because then I started utilizing that prayer, asking God to open my eyes so that I can see more of you in this situation than more of the problem. Because that's what happens. Like in our minds, we constantly perseverate on the, the negative thing that's happening, the negative person that's in our life, the negative environment, our circumstances, and we forget that God is God. He's there <laughs> from the beginning to the end. And we just have to be able to look at him and keep our eyes focused in on him instead of the problem. Because we know when we focus on the problem, what happens? It continues to grow, 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 and grow. But we need God to grow, 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 grow on the inside of us so we can continue to become more like him. We need to be able to reverence him in all that he is so that we can navigate through whatever trial trying time it is and not hindering what God is trying to do in our lives. So I want you to all think about that. Um, in 1 Samuel 17 and 11, it says, On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. How many times have you had a problem come upon you and you became instantly terrified? That problem kept showing up every single day, in and out, in and out. And you increase in your fear. Um, and the thing is, is that like giants and issues that you have tend to talk a lot. And that's what the Philistine was doing as he showed up every day for 40 days, tormenting the people, talking, talking, talking. And the voices can penetrate your soul and it can cause a lot of fright. And that's because you consistently allow them to appear instead of silencing them. Now, every process and thing that exalts itself against the word of God has to be cast down. Do you know that it can be cast down? Did you know that you have that right to cast it down? Let me give you a scripture in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, where it says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So that's the response to that. That's the remedy. And you must apply that strategy each time the giant continues to try to exalt itself against the word of God. Against your faith. Against who you know God to be. 
cast it down and you can <laughs> verbatim repeat that scripture towards that stronghold because it's a demonic stronghold and we have to cast it down because the only strong we want is from God. And we want him to be our buckler, our shield, our strong tower. That's it. We're not going to tolerate anything that's ungodly being a strong tower in our lives. So um, outside of that scripture from verse 11, I want you to know that each encounter with the giant, the thing that you you can't stop thinking about, the problem that you have in your life weakens you the more you hear it. You come into agreement with it every time you allow yourself to sit with it. And it impacts your nervous system. It impacts your organs. You know, think about something that made your stomach ache. Either you went to stress eating or have no appetite. It shuts down your organs. It shuts down the nature of who you are. And that's how you know that it's not of God because God is not going to want you to go through something that takes away something that he created you at, which is a calm nervous system, okay? <laughs> so I want you all to really just take note of this right now so that you can really think about how you're coming into agreement with the Goliath, with the problems day in and day out. Um, David heard how Goliath kept coming and tormenting he saw him and he studied him. That's what he was doing. He studied him. I think that is so good. I did not have that written down. <laughs> David studied Goliath. He saw how big he was. He saw how loud he was. And what he did was he stayed silent and gathered data. And that's what you have to do about your problem. You stay silent. You do not react to it. You gather data so that you can talk to God and ask him, what is the strategy? that you have, that you want me to combat and respond to this problem with. That's what David did, okay? Um, David became motivated seeing Goliath, hearing Goliath, seeing everybody else scared. He's the smallest one. Nobody thinks that he has it. They're like, you're too young. What are you doing? And 1 Samuel um, 17 and 23 says, and he was talking with him, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance. And David heard it. Like I said, he heard him from the other side. And 1 Samuel 17, 24 says, whenever the Israelites saw the man, they all fled from him and ran away. How many of us do that? How many of us are combating, are dealing with an issue And we are running and hiding with social media, running and hiding by keeping busy, running and hiding by sitting on the phone, spending time with people, running, hiding, food, shopping, you name it. It's something that we can do to keep ourselves busy. Think about that thing that you go and do when you are feeling fearful and like you're worried about the big problem that's in your life. You cannot run from something with great fear. Because you're going to be running towards that thing. Little, little do you know, you're really not going to run away from it because all it's going to do is continue to keep tormenting you like Goliath was doing for those three days. He kept showing up. He kept saying stuff. He kept making himself known. That's what that fear does. That's why you have to combat it. You have to address it. Um, I remember when uh, in, in 1 Samuel 17, 26, where David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Who do you think you are? That's what you have to, to ask your problem. Who do you think you are to show up and think that you are a match for my God? You have to, you have to start questioning these things because you're already having a conversation. You're already doing this in your mind. So you have to come with a level of confidence to help stop it in its tracks before it gets too wild. Okay. Um, let me see. Another thing that I noticed while reading the scripture is that, you know, when you are dealing with a problem and you have leaders, you have people of authority, you have older people, elders in your family or friends or just in your community and you reach out to them for support, they can often respond to you with doubt. Why do I know? I've experienced it before, but that's why you have to go to God and say, God, what did you put on the inside of me that 
cause this individual to think that I can't do whatever it is that I'm saying that you told me that I could do. Um, and, and this is what David had to do with what it came to Saul. In 1 Samuel 17 and 33, Saul replied to him and said, you are not able to go out this, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man and he has been a warrior from his youth. God uses the foolish things to confound the wise, okay? I believe that's in Proverbs. The foolish things to confound the wise. So Saul, you know, he's been reigning for some time. He has some wisdom. He's an elder. And he's telling this young man, David, oh, this Philistine that you're talking about, you know, he's been doing this since his youth. He has great strength. He he has um, experience in this area. You know, you're just young. You're naive. You don't know much. How many times have you heard that? I've heard that a time or two. Because people don't understand that whatever God puts on the inside of you is no match for time, the season, another person. It doesn't matter what experience somebody else has. When God calls you to do something, to ignite something on the inside of you, when he calls you to an assignment, nobody can come up against that assignment. There, God is doing something through you. It's not on our own accord. It's through God. And if God is the Alpha and Omega, if God is the greatest power there is, then what, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what can that, what that thing do? And a lot of people don't understand that. And they don't sit and, and have spiritual discernment to be able to give you the wisdom. Instead, they go off what they don't know. They go off what they know. So this is where you just have to stay mature in the Lord and continue to draw near to him and keep moving forward because that's what he wants. Um, God, um, hold on. David remembered what God had already took him through as far as a series of lessons. Whenever there's a big assignment for you to follow, God has already taken you through different lessons, things that you've already had to encounter, and then when you come up against this thing, it's no match because you already have the skills and the knowing to be able to fulfill whatever that calling that God has pushed you to do. For me, I'll just give an example. I'm not going to get too deep, but me being a mental health therapist, like I, I, I went through a series of things in my life that brought me to that level of being a mental health therapist and an entrepreneur that I had no idea that God was setting me up for. God will set you up for your greatest comeback. Let me tell you, there's always a great comeback for someone. And I wouldn't even say it's a comeback. He's always setting you up for um, another level. Let's just say that. He's always setting you up for another level. You are going through lessons. You are going through trials. Ask God, what is this teaching me? God, what is this teaching me? What am I supposed to gain from this? So in that way, some of you can stop and you'll be able to say, listen, I get it. I am guilty where I have to learn <laughs> lesson after lesson after lesson. But I'm definitely now in a space where I ask God, what do you want me to do before I do this thing? Give me the instructions so I can know exactly what I'm coming up against and why I'm coming up against it. And so that I can just keep my eyes on you and my focus and what I need to do. That's what we all need to do. <laughs> it's a great, great upgrade. Because what you're saying is, God, let your will be done, not my mind. Let not my flesh rise up and interfere with the calling that you have given me. Not let my flesh rise up and doubt who you called me to be. Let not my flesh rise up and cause me to be out of this state of fraud. Okay. That's what it's saying. <laughs> So what I want, what I, what I um, really focused in on is that, you know, in, in the scriptures, uh, hold on, let me get it, let me get it, let me get it. I got so many notes, my goodness. All right. So first Samuel 17 and 37 says the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. Do you know that you have to stand on who God called you to be by focusing on what God has already brought you through? And those individuals that are in your lives, they will bless your journey. Hey, I remember when God brought me from here, here, and here. I got this thing. 
Nobody can come up against what God has already done. And they definitely shouldn't come up against what God is telling them to do. But sometimes just to get them to back off, you have to let them know, hey, I'm not doing this on my own accord. I'm doing this on the strength of the Lord. And that's what David told Saul. And Saul was like, you know, go. And may the Lord be with you. And what I noticed is that, you know, when I was reading the scripture, that there was a mindset shift that had to take place with David. He had to take off the mindset and the strategies and the processes of men throughout his process when Saul gave him the armor, right? David never said, hey, I need this armor. Saul automatically said, hey, you're going to need this, this, this. This is what you need. But I, as I was reading the scripture this morning, it let me know that, you know, when we put on the armor of the people um, that God didn't call us to put on, it can have an interference with where we're going. And we're going to automatically have to push it off. So, for example, in 1 Samuel 17 and verse 9 says, David fastened on his sword over the tent of the tribe walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. If you're not used to that limited mindset, that fearful mindset, that stagnant mindset, that, oh, I don't know, full of doubt mindset, you have to know that God did not give that to you, so you don't want to pick it up. Because picking up that mindset, which is what we tend to do, especially when we come into this world, like we learn all of these habits and these beliefs and things of that nature that are not of God, that cause us stagnancy. It causes us to have like this heavy weight that we're carrying through life. And when David put that stuff on, do you see how immediately he knew, hey, something is off. This is not what God trained me to do. He did not, the way that I feel, it feels like it's wrong. Something is in error. And he immediately took it off. So that's what we must do. We must come into agreement with God to, and, and out of agreement with man. That's it. That's it. Um, and I want you to also focus in on how that giant in your life, that problem in your life is trying to minimize who you are. It's trying to have you feel guilt and shame about how, who you used to be, about the lack of experience that you may have, just like Goliath did when he saw David. Um, first Samuel 17 and 43 says, he said to David, am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? He saw him with his, uh, five smooth stones. And the uh, Philistine cursed David by his gods. Right? So when we come into agreement with those problems, they can tell us, oh, you should feel shame. You should feel unworthy. And then you come into agreement and you curse. Because that's what those problems do. As Goliath did to David. But you can't curse something that God has blessed. Right? So you have to also remember that when you're going into war. And you're going through any trial. And you also must be bold and courageous. Read Joshua 1. He repeats it to Joshua at least three times in that chapter. But also, you want to be bold and courageous as David was in 1 Samuel 17 and 46 through, 7, through 47 where he says, This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Mm. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. All of your worries, all of your pain. God will take it out of it. He will. I know this video is getting a little long, you guys, but bear with me. I have two important points that I have to make because this whole scripture about David and Goliath hit different for me. Like, I read this several times. <laughs> but it was something about the midnight hours when the Lord woke me up and said, hey, this is a strategy that I want to apply to the problem that you're having right now. Even during the midst of this storm, literally, the recovery from the hurricane that happened. So I would just, you know, as soon as I read all of that and I got the insight, something broke off of me. Something spiritually took place and I have yet to see the physical manifestation of that. 
one, I just want you all to know just how powerful scripture is because it's the word of God and how victorious over any circumstance you have, God is. God is. I just want you to, I should make a shirt. God is, okay? He, he is. Mm, all of that. So uh, another point that I wanted to make is that, you know how David not only just studied Goliath, studied the problem that his people was facing because it, it, this wasn't even a problem just for David. This was a problem for the people in his family, the people in his community, those leaders. If you have a problem, uh, um, a, a solution to a problem that you can solve, this is where you come in handy. You study it. Look at how God has been taking you through lessons. What, what expertise do you feel like you have? You don't have to be an expert on it, right? But there's something that you are very passionate about, that you have been through the maybe the fire. You've been refined in that area. This is your solution to the problem. May that be on a political, a social, um, social justice situation, uh, a medical health care legal whatever field that you feel like this is, is is an issue at um i feel like this is for many people who were called to be entrepreneurs right so what is the problem what is the solution what has god planted on the inside of you where you have been through trials and tribulations and god has carried you through them that you can offer somebody else talk to the lord he's going to put it right on your heart and tell you but what I liked is how David initiated addressing the giant. He didn't wait and say, hey, I'm waiting for the, the giant to approach me. I'm waiting for Goliath to run up on me before I fight back. David said, hey, I'm going to, going to go ahead and attack this thing. So think about the things that you need to attack in your life right now. Um, it says in 1 Samuel 17 and 48, as a Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line. Run to the problem and get to it. <laughs> because remember, uh, David already had all of his tools. He had the smooth and the, the stone and the slingshot. That's all he needed. What are the tools that you need in your life? Maybe it's reading the word of God and memorizing it so that you can cast down whatever thing is coming your way, whatever attacks, any negative thoughts in your mind, mental torments, unhealthy emotions that you have. The word of God may be your solution. It may be fasting. It may be praying. It may be continuous like studying the Bible and understanding who a prophet is. If you're called to be a, if, if God has called you to be a prophet, a pastor, an apostle, an evangelist, a teacher, you know, part of the fivefold ministry. If God has just called you to be a disciple, He's called us all to be servants. See exactly how you can show up and serve in your community if that's the thing that you are feeling led to do. We have to figure out what it is that it are our sling and stones that we need in this season so we can combat every single problem that is coming our way. I pray that this has been beneficial for some of you. Um, all of you, actually. <laughs> I hope it's beneficial for you all that you're able to really study the word of God and apply it to your life. That's how I apply the word of God to my life. And it, it has been um, perfecting me over time. Like, God perfects everything that concerns me. He goes before me and makes my crooked path straight. But there's something that I must do to make sure that that perfection process take, it is completed all of the way. Because if I'm not doing my part, then whatever God has already done, because he's already done it, it cannot come to pass in our lives. So we have to have faith, works, and most importantly, <laughs> submission <laughs> and obedience. So I want to encourage you all to definitely have that in this season. Every single season, work hard towards it because it's going to get you more places than you can remember. But most importantly, you will feel the love of God. You will have that relationship with him. And I know that a lot of you are yearning for that relationship. And my prayer is that you have that and that you continue to nurture it and take care of it because the relationship with God, nobody can take that away from you. It's very precious. So take care of it. You guys, um, stay tuned on this channel. I'll have some things coming up.
I'm working on a lot of stuff behind the scenes and I'm just trying to be very sensitive to what God wants me to do. I'm the type of person, I'm here, there, everywhere, but um, I have learned the art of resting and sitting in the secret place with most high God and it has been so amazing, so amazing. But you will see me posting, especially about the workshops that I'm doing, um, which are very fun. And because of all of this transpiring, I'm definitely gonna be canceling the fall workshop that's supposed to be for next weekend so that I can prepare for this week doing some other things. But um, so just keep, just stay tuned. Um, when I am ready to repost that, I will definitely do that. Until next time, I love you all with the love of God. Be blessed.